Right, today I'm here with our physio Jules and we are showing you out there who have sore necks how to strengthen it because in our clinic the biggest thing apart from stiffness is weakness that is giving people a recurrent soreness in their neck and especially for people who sit at a desk and have really bad posture. So today it was all about strengthening the front and the back of the neck. Now you might need one of these, TheraBand, of course, because we love those, but the rest is basically just using yourself. So Jules is in our first exercise position, which is what we call deep neck flexor. Okay, now deep neck flexors are in the neck. Now when we do this exercise, we don't want our big ones doing the job, we want our small ones doing the job. So Jules, if you put two fingers on here, what she's going to monitor is whether her sternocleidomastoids, which is the big suckers in here, are not working. So we don't want the big ones working, we want the small ones working. So the way you do that is doing an exercise and making sure the big ones don't come on. So what I'll get her to do is put two fingers here, one on each sternocleidomastoid. Now to find your sternocleidomastoid, if you look at that, when she raises her neck, see those two big ones there? That is your SCM. Now, that's what you don't want to be working. So she's feeling for whether that fires or not. If it starts firing, she stops and doesn't go any further. And what she's going to do is she's going to try and go into cervical flexion. She's going to try and use muscles in her throat, if you like, to nod her chin down and then lengthen the back of the neck. Now you might have seen this like, this is silly, this exercise, but this exercise is just like doing transverse abdominus or core work for your lower back. It's like the core work, the activation work for your neck. And it's so important, it's boring as, but it's really good. So what I want her doing is tucking her chin down, so going into flexion. Now if you guys are struggling with this, what you can do is stick the tongue on your roof of your mouth when you do it. That'll engage a few throat muscles and sort of stabilize that hyoid bone and that'll give you a bit of something to use to try and get those deep neck flexors working. Okay, so she's gonna tongue on roof of her mouth, she's gonna slowly nod down all the way until that SCM is about to fire and she can feel that tone just about to kick in and then she releases off. All right, so she's also trying to think about sliding the back of her head like a bowling ball and nodding that chin down until that one fires, okay? So you're only allowed to move as far as that one is about to fire up, okay? So she doesn't go down too hard, otherwise that's pointless, that's like working your outer core, we're trying to work the inner core. Now those muscles there are the ones, the strength in the front is going to stop you doing that so much, okay? So if they're a bit stronger, they'll pull you in a natural tone in that position. So people who have bad posture like that, these ones are really long and they're just switched off. So therefore, if they're switched off all the time, they're weak and then it's hard to maintain a good posture that way. All right, so this is gonna help her. So good for strengthening, but also really good for an acute neck that's really sore, okay? So that's our first one. Second one is deep neck, neck extensors. <laughs> Let's say that again. Deep neck extensors, so she has to be on her front. So again, you can use a bit of a towel or you can use your hands. So for this exercise, she's gonna do working extensors this way, but I'm also going to get her to do neck flexors in the front, okay? So she's going to a bit of co-contract now. So that's why we do that one first. So she's got the idea of what muscles she's got to use here to then work them with this one, okay? Now this is like, if you think of doing a one arm one leg raise, like a bird dog for your lower back, this is almost a bird dog for your back, okay? So strengthening statically the spinal extensors here and she's working in the front as well, okay? She's getting co-contraction of her core for her neck, if you like. Now, first thing, shoulder blades, best thing we want doing is setting down. So she's gonna try and depress those shoulder blades, not retract them, just depress them a little bit, okay? And then she's gonna push her hands down into the ground just a little bit as well. So she's got a bit of scapular stabilization there which is giving her a base of support so she can use her spinal extensors, all right? So now what she's gonna do is she's gonna lift her forehead off her hands, but what I want her thinking about is tucking her chin up to the ceiling. So she's gonna raise her chin up, all right? So she's, you can see these are working already. So these are switched on here, but she's working underneath. She's working her deep neck flexors. And if it helps her, she can put her tongue on the roof of her mouth to hold that up. And that's a 10 second hold. So this is a lot longer, this one. And then she drops down, relaxes, let that go, 
let the shoulder blades go, relax for five, and then reset it. So shoulder blades down, push down with the hands, and then up comes the chin. And you notice, I don't want her extending her lower back too much, uh, upper back too much. So I don't want her going up through here, it's more here. The other thing I'm not letting her do, is I don't want to do that. Okay, we're not doing cervical extension, all right? We're trying to get static extensors working, but doing it in a retraction position, which is the position you want to be coming back into with bad posture. If you're in that protracted position, you're trying to be in this retracted position, okay? So you need the muscles of the back of the neck and the front of the neck a little bit stronger. You don't go and do that. So there's no point strengthening that way for this situation, okay? It's up into retraction. So in prone, but retraction, okay? 10 second holds, probably about 20 of those. We'll split up into maybe 10 and then another 10, okay? Now, those two exercises are the low level exercises. They're the front and the back of your neck. Then we move to more advanced stuff, all right? So if you come up into all fours, Jules, the advanced work, this looks a bit sort of full on, but it's not. But I wouldn't do this first up. You've got to do an acute neck. You probably do this once you're down the track, the pain's gone down a bit, you want to strengthen it. There you go. So this is going into all fours. We've got gravity. We've also got a band. So we're going to do the same exercise, okay? But we've got resistance. Now, you've got to be careful with this one. We don't want to make sure this hurts. We don't want to overcompensate either. So she needs to be up into a little bit more neutral. There we go. Make sure it calls on, all that's working. This band is obviously pulling her this way, okay? So she's going to let her head go down with the band this way into protection. So bad posture that way. And then she's going to reverse and stretch the band. There we go, you see that? And then slowly down. Now the down part's a hard part. She's already struggling a little bit. The up part's not too bad because you can feel the resistance, but you've got to control this vertically down, not tilting the head that way. And come on, you feel that? You okay? So, no pain with this one, all right? So if it's painful, go back to the previous exercise. This one, you'll notice she's actually moving through range now. So we've gone from static or isometric to moving, okay? So she's getting that spine moving through range. And this is really going to get that strength work there. The resistance adds the load, which gives you that more strength. So that's great, okay? So that's an easy one to do. All right, so we're going to do two advanced semi-advanced isometric exercises. The first one is just called isometrics, but we do it in every direction. And the second one is a wall end just for the back. So the first one is her getting your patient, Jules in this regard, is, this looks a bit silly, right? But pushing her head into her hand, okay? So what I want her doing is trying to use, now look at this. Can you see, she's automatically switched these on, okay? So you can see this is more advanced stuff. Before we were trying to use just the deep neck flexors, now, we're cranking up everything through there. So I still want the tongue on her roof and mouth to try and engage that. She's gonna push in against her hand right up to the point of pain, okay? So don't, she doesn't push so hard that it causes pain, but she's trying to hold that for at least sort of 10 seconds, maybe 20, maybe 30 seconds. So she's building up that endurance. Release that off. Then she works on back, okay? So she's gotta push back, but don't move. So doesn't go into there. She gets into the neutral position. She pushes forward with her hand, and back with her head, okay? Same thing, so she'll feel that working up the back of her neck. So you only press as much as you need to, as much as you, you know, you wanna push with your hand, you gotta resist with your head, and you go right to the point where it's just about getting painful. That means you know that those muscles are not gonna get sore tomorrow, but you're working at your optimal ability. Then, sideways, so she's gonna push sideways. Now, make sure she doesn't tilt her head over, so there's no point sort of pushing your head you know, over to the side, she's gonna make sure that she does not move her head from neutral. So maybe using a mirror is a good idea. And then go to the other side, pretty easy stuff, okay. And I work on those four. If you want to advance that, you work on a bit of rotation, which is going and looking. So if she goes on the side of her face, she's gonna crank to the right, she's gonna push that way, okay? Which gets you some rotation work in there, okay? Now this is getting pretty nitty gritty, but for some people that have problems in all directions from really chronic weakness, it's awesome, all right? And then the last one, which looks a wee bit controversial, but it is good, is your wall lean. Now this is where you point where you're really gaining for some strength. So for her, tips are, I would get 
this because it just looks after the back of the head because sometimes leaning on a wall is a bit tough. So that's just for padding, all right? Mm -hmm. So she's gonna lean on that. Her shoulders and hips are on the wall, okay? But you can see her feet are away. Now, how far away you are is how much load you wanna put through your neck. So you could be a little bit away from the wall, it won't be much load. You could be a long way from the wall and it's gonna be a big bit of load. So be careful when you start how far away you go. Now from here, first thing she's gonna do is turn on her core here because we want her stabilized, all right? So she's gonna switch on her pelvic floor, tighten up here a little bit. She's gonna turn on her throat muscles a little bit too. She'll be on her upper core going. Then she's gonna push away from the wall with her bum. Okay, now not too far because we don't wanna overextend. At that point, she's gonna turn on her glutes and then she's gonna push through her head to push her shoulders off the wall. See how she just lifted there? All right, so now she's in a plank. If you look at her sideways, she's in a plank that way, okay, from her feet. So she should be feeling this from her feet, tight through her knees, glutes, core, shoulder blades down, back of the neck, breathing, okay, and she's working this quite a lot. So those back extensors are holding her up, but it's not a mass amount of load. It feels quite a lot, okay, just shoulders back for me. And I'd start at 30 seconds and maybe, maybe build to a minute. All right, she waits for a bit and goes again. Now, you can do that again, Jules. Come off, you come, push the neck. Now, what's gonna happen is that is quite a high load for the neck. It feels really good after you get a bit of an analgesic effect, um, but it can make your feel, head feel sort of quite sort of light and bobby. So just be careful you don't get dizzy from this one. This is a really, really nice one to do for your back extensors. It really helps out with holding your head up in this position, especially if you're sitting, if you're at a computer, but also in the gym, okay? So it stops that sort of head forward position, gives you a bit of strength there, because a lot of people have the weakness from so much pain. So give those five a crack. But if you've got neck pain, she hasn't got it, but if you've got neck pain at home, don't just roll straight in this. I would see a physio and make sure these exercises are right for you and there's nothing else you need to do or there's any treatment that you need to do before you launch straight into this. But if you've been given this sort of exercise, here's some homework for you.